at the end of my talk, your belief that technology is neutral will be refuted. And what do I mean by technology? Every object that is created by humans, the shoes you're wearing, the pen you're riding with, the smartphone in your pocket. Technology shapes the context in which you behave and make choices. Take, for instance, the smartphone. How many times have you looked at it today? On average, 90 times per day. The first iPhone entered the market in 2007. In just 11 years, it has had a major impact on our lives. It has changed our behavior in numerous ways, and also our norms, for instance, on taking pictures in public and sharing them online. I work in the field of computer ethics, and I've done a lot of research on the relation between technology and values. And I have a question for you. In what kind of information society do you want to live? But first, let's see why technology is not neutral. It even affects the way you perceive reality and look at the world. Many of you wear glasses or contact lenses. Imagine how difficult life would be without them. Would you be able to do your job? Would you be able to drive your car? Your glasses or your contact lenses mediate the way you look at reality. They shape your environment. Technology also makes visible those aspects that we cannot see with the naked eye. A microscope made bacteria visible, which has changed our views on hygiene. A telescope amplifies the universe, depicting how alone we actually are in the galaxy. This picture was made by Voyager 1 28 years ago. Do you see what it shows? It shows a family portrait of our solar system, and it makes painfully clear how small we are. Everything that you see in this world, everything that you experience takes place on this small blue dot. Technology forces us to question our place in the universe. Technology also forces us to question the boundary between man and machine. How much of Stephen Hawking was human? And how much was technology? And where can we draw the boundary between the two? We are born as humans, but many of us will die as cyborgs, part human, part computer. Several people already have a pacemaker implanted that is connected to the internet. Technological design is also driven by values. As long as you're not wearing your seatbelt, an annoying alarm will go off. This design is loaded with moral choices to increase safety. Is this neutral? No. It shapes your behavior, because what will you do when you hear the alarm? Put on your seatbelt. And which message do these designs convey? Well, they tell a lot about how we, as a society, think about women. Women must really, really, really like the color pink. 
let's return to the example of the smartphone again. It has changed our norms on being available. It has changed our norms on sharing. It has also changed our behavior in numerous ways. Do you also drive back home when you've forgotten your phone there? We ignore people in our immediate surroundings because our phone distracts us. The smartphone has also led to the irresistible compulsion of taking pictures of our food. It has also changed our norms on communicating where we are. Oh my God, I'm at a funeral. I must take a selfie with the coffin. And apparently, we not only take nude selfies in the bathroom, we also share them with our network. <laughs> Because so many of us are distracted by the smartphone, this has led to new designs, such as LED lights in the pavement that depict the color of the traffic light. People have been hit by a car or a tram because they didn't look up from their phone. This design is needed to decrease the number of accidents. Is technology neutral? No. We shape technology, but technology also shapes us. Let's look at computer technology and algorithms. On a daily basis, we inform ourselves about the world through search engines, such as Google's recommender engine, the most popular one. And sometimes the moral dimensions of technology are not immediately visible. They are hidden. In this particular case, algorithms decide which information you will and will not see. These algorithms are neither neutral nor value-free. A lot of factors determine the ranking you will be given. Your personal search history, your location, search engine optimization. Is this problematic? It can be, yes. Google has become the way to inform ourselves about the world today. So the way we inform ourselves about the world is driven by market logics. And the exact way in which these algorithms work is an even bigger secret than the recipe of Coca-Cola. So this is an extremely important thing to be aware of. These rankings are not neutral. Research on the so-called search engine manipulation effect shows that people who can play the algorithms well can influence your thoughts, your decisions, your behavior, even in the context of political elections. Here you see some of the top results after searching for three white teenagers on Google Images. And now you will see some of the top results after searching for three black teenagers. Mug shots. Taken after people had been arrested. Societal biases and stereotypes seep into the data, which can lead to harmful output decided by algorithms. These harmful effects can disadvantage underrepresented groups in society, such as black people or women. There is research showing that on Google, women are less often exposed to job advertisements for high-paid jobs than men. Some groups will be targeted more than others. This, however, does not mean that they are only negative. Certainly not. Algorithms can be extremely helpful, especially in analyzing complex data. 
There was research showing that algorithms are capable of classifying skin cancer with the same level of competence as dermatologists. But in other contexts, they can lead to discriminatory decisions. So, do you believe that you can escape these algorithmic decisions on your life and on your behavior by pressing a button and going offline? Logging out is becoming an illusion. Children born today are online from the belly to the grave. A very popular way to announce a pregnancy nowadays is by sharing a picture of the ultrasound on social media. The, pic the baby is not even born yet, but is already connected or already part of the internet. And even after your death, your data will not be deleted immediately. In Belgium, we already have gravestones with QR codes. So people who visit your grave can scan these codes with their smartphones and obtain more information about you, such as your Facebook profile or your favorite music. You can communicate from beyond the grave. We cannot log out because we've already entered the era of the Internet of Things. An increasing amount of objects is becoming part of the Internet. Cars are already connected to the internet. Pacemakers, even condoms. That is correct. You can track every move you make when you're making love and calculate how many calories you burned with the icon. The connected condom. Welcome to the future of wearable technology in the bedroom. At home, your alarm clock can be connected to the central heating system, to your coffee machine, to your toaster. So by the time you wake up, all these machines are working for you without you having to intervene. This is a new society. No one before has lived in a society in which so much data is collected from the belly to the grave. Algorithms learn from all this data and make decisions and predictions from self-driving cars to healthcare to drones in warfare. Also, toys are increasingly becoming connected to the internet. Imagine this scenario. Algorithms can calculate the lifespan of a toy how many days, weeks, or months, on average, does your child show interest in the toy? Companies can use this information for personal marketing. They can send advertisements to seduce you into buying new products. This obviously raises a number of ethical concerns, not in the least one of privacy. So, during the course of a lifetime, an enormous amount of information is collected through computer technology. But we know that technology is not neutral. We know that algorithms are not inherently fair, and yet they already have an important share in how we see the world today. They make decisions and predictions also about our voting preferences. We also know that we cannot log out anymore. We design technology, but technology also designs us. Our norms, our values, our behavior, our choices. Design is about changing society, so it is inherently normative. And the good news is, you do have a voice. You do have the power to change. Society is creatable. You can ask for better regulations, 
you can be disobedient. You do not have to use Google search engine. There are alternatives to it, such as DuckDuckGo, which does not track you. Think critically. What world are we creating in the long run? What is desirable? In what kind of information society do you want to live? And your children? And your grandchildren? Thank you for listening.